The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Good morning. Happy Thursday. It is... What, what month is it? It's the fourth <laughs> month, but... Oh, it's April. Oh um, wow. It's been April for 28 days. Yeah, Sean. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's the 28th. Uh, the year is 2022. And hey, right on time. 5.30. Boom. Wow. Look at us. Look, look at, us. at us. Look at us. Look at us. Hey, Steph. Uh, one of the greatest weekends of the entire year is this weekend. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? Yeah, the NFL Draft! That was not what I was expecting. The NFL Draft, Steph. John, I thought you were going to be like, I'm going camping, I'm going to a (laughs) resort, I'm going houseboating, I'm watching TV. Okay. This is the merging of my one love of college football Yeah. going into the NFL, my other love. It's where... College players run out of eligibility for university and college, and so now they get drafted to NFL teams, and then they find uh, they get to go play their pro careers. Now, is this one of those things you bet on, like fantasy football, but fantasy draft or anything, or yeah. is it just like you're cheering for somebody? Yeah, so we all have like our favorite teams and everything. So obviously, you want your favorite team to draft the best player. But then, me and my friends, we try to predict what the NFL teams are going to do. So then we'll be like, uh, with the number one pick, I bet Jacksonville is going to take this person. With the number two pick, and we do all thirty-two, the first thirty-two picks, and we just try and predict what's going to happen. Twenty bucks each, and then whoever gets the most right winner takes all okay and you are like a total sleuth in this because 13 saturdays last fall you didn't leave your house (laughs) once (laughs) learn a new term sean Mm, okay haven't done one of these in a while bring it on megalophobia megalophobia any idea megalophobia uh <laughs> sorry, that's just me thinking. I'm just like, let me just say it again and then I can try and think of a word here. Uh is this like maybe um being like afraid of people who know too much? Being afraid of people no. Like smart at like smart people, you're afraid of smart people? No, it is not. It is being afraid I was just of kidding. something. I was oh, okay. just kidding. That okay. was my joke answer. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your real answer, Sean? My real answer is being afraid of big buildings. So true. <laughs> yes! So I, I knew it all along. I feel like you're leveling up your lexicon before I even get to press the button. Level up your lexicon. <laughs> so it's not just it's large... This is my first one I think I got, ever. It is. I love yeah. that you're having a dance over there. Not just large buildings, though. It's a fear of large objects. Oh. So you could be afraid of a horse... You could be afraid of like a really big cheese wheel. An NBA player. Yeah, just things that are big. Yeah. And um, they say it's like a little known phobia and a lot of people like don't talk about it. Like, oh my gosh, that building scares me. Or, like, it's a big, it's a big guy. It's a big thing to talk about. <laughs> it's just That's so, why they don't talk about it. So big. It's a big thing to talk about. <laughs> Yesterday you were sharing some life hacks with us about getting older. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you were saying that you like to have your heated seats on in the summer because it helps your lower back feel better. Yeah, well, definitely right now in the spring, it's lovely. I haven't tested it out too much in the summertime, though, when it's like real warm. Okay, well, yesterday afternoon, it felt real warm, and I decided to try your trick. Oh, how did it go? Well, honestly, it wasn't on purpose. I couldn't figure out how to turn off the heated seat oh. in the station vehicle. <laughs> It was awful. (laughs) It was awful? Why? What happened? Because it was beautifully warm outside and I have my coat on and then I'm sitting in a seat that's making me feel like I'm uncomfortably sitting in a sauna with my clothes on. (laughs) It was like, is this supposed to make me feel better? It's not. What setting did you, did you have it on high or do you have it on low? I, when I figured it out, it was definitely on high. Okay. No, you don't want high. High feels like you have a toot sitting in your pants (laughs) a little bit. That's not great. You aren't on low. Low is like... Like the little like calming like tailbone back massage ish. Okay, but there's nothing massaging you though, so it's just kind of like a heating yeah. pad in the warm sunshine. Yeah, see that's great. Isn't that great? I don't. You got to go for another drive. Just tell our boss it's okay. You're just <laughs> testing something out for the show. 
drive the vehicle around for a hot second, you'd be like, okay, low is where it's at. Maybe you could come with me because I don't know how I'll to do, turn yeah, it yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, I'll do passenger seat. I'll just lie. I'll recline the seat. Seat warmer on. Oh, it'll be perfect. It's a date. <laughs> Matea Roach. If you don't know the name, you don't watch Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> or listen to us. I've chatted about her a couple times in the last few weeks because she is like on a roll on Can- Jeopardy. Canadian legend will say she has the longest winning streak in Canadian history for Jeopardy. 17 wins she's on right now. Almost $400,000 United States dollars. Go, Matea, go. Oh, my goodness. 400 USD dollars. That's a lot of Canadian dollars. Oh, yeah. Eighth longest run in Jeopardy history, too, as well. So she's in the top 10 of Jeopardy history, and she's only 23 years old. That is amazing. A tutor, so she's definitely, like, worked her way around all the subjects. Yeah. And uh, she's from Nova Scotia. Yeah, from Nova Scotia. She's tutoring in Toronto right now. Uh, Ken Jennings, who hosts the show, uh, co-hosts the show, I think. Yeah, Maya um, like Balik. Yeah, 74 wins. So maybe she can uh, keep going to try and catch up with Ken Jennings right there. Okay. Do you do you know how Jeopardy's filmed? Because she's like doing interviews and stuff with like a bunch of like people. Is it filmed like a couple days beforehand and then she like kind of goes on again or what? Do you know the background? Yeah, it's actually filmed months beforehand. So they filmed this like last summer. They do like a four month filming for the entire year. And then, uh, yeah, and then you just kind of got to wait for your day to to show up and you're at home watching yourself on screen for a mistake you've been thinking about since last summer, basically. Oh, (laughs) that is so interesting. Doing these interviews, when people are asking her questions, like she knows what the end result is, but she has to like casually like play it cool, I guess. Like one of the the things in the article that I read was like the hardest thing about the show is coming with, with the interesting anecdotes that they ask her. Like, oh, tell me something interesting about you. Yeah, can you imagine being on 17? Or like Ken Jennings, day 74. It's like, is there anything interesting left yeah, about yeah, me? Yeah, episode 70 is like, my favorite color is blue. It's so interesting. Can yeah. we put a cerulean in front of it? Yeah. Although the, the lasting impression that I just read in this article, uh, Matea said, uh, being on a game show, maybe now she can finally afford to buy a house in this economy. Ow. The weather we've been going through for the past week here, I want to say, Steph, is is near perfect for my sleeping conditions. Um, w- windows open. That's how I'm talking. Oh, here. okay. So it's been like plus 11 to plus 15 every day, and that's kind of what you like to have when you're sleeping? Yeah, obviously it drops down to like zero or one or two, that area. Yeah. And just the, the coolness of the evening, I'll crack open a window. It How I like my, my bed to be is like a cold bed, <laughs> but then like three or four blankets so like warm blankets cold bed like that just like my body temperature is just like pristine right there well i was gonna say because a couple weeks ago you were like i think i get to put away the comforter now when you sleep with the window open are you like give me back my comforter yeah yeah see in my old place i didn't have a window to crack open and, and you so... also had the heat on 90 <laughs> degrees every day that's right that's right the, the yeah constant <laughs> you heat survived <laughs> <laughs> but now i'm just like oh i got this like window i can crack i was like no bring back that comforter baby in fact i'm gonna top on another blanket on top of that bad boy and i'm just gonna tuck myself into a little burrito and have the best sleep of my life a little chillier today is that are you gonna stick with this plan even though it's kind of rainy and a little bit windy yeah good question see this is what i'm teetering on like the rain that's gonna be some nice ambiance if it comes during the evening that i could probably fall asleep like real quick and then give <laughs> like a real nice but then i'm just like uh it's borderline uh, almost a little too chilly for me almost so uh i'm probably gonna end up closing it maybe have it open during the day but then close it at night so it has still that cold bed feel big plans big plans have you ever gotten up in the middle of the night and been like oh it's too cold i gotta shut this window now never never Never. the burrito's tight (laughs) watch any hgtv show and the thing that people want on it is always open concept knocking down walls all the time people just want to take anger out i think yeah look at those clean lines i can see all the way from the front door (laughs) into the back bedroom past the living room and the kitchen and everything like that Uh, well now builders are saying that people are actually asking for the opposite 
of open concept. Really? They want closed concept, if that's a thing. <laughs> Putting up walls. Yeah. So they're saying that because people are working from home oh, a lot more, being yeah. um, stuck at home, mm-hmm. and then maybe the kids are sometimes out of school and working at home, they're like, I need a little bit of separation from my family. Yeah. I would like some extra office space. Yeah. Even adding on to that, I know for San, for my girlfriend, she wants uh, separation from her work area because she works from home. And so she hates that her work area is in her living room and that sometimes when she's like relaxing in her living room, she's like, ugh, work desk, work chair, ugh. She doesn't like to look at it. Well, that makes complete sense. I think it would go the same way when you're at work in your living room. You'd be like, ugh, I didn't fold up that throw blanket last night. I guess I will now. Ugh, I should have done the dishes. That's what all I can see while I'm trying to do my report is that there's dishes in the background. It's my job to do them. Yeah, like the disconnect never truly goes away one way or the other while you're on shift working or whether you're off. Everything's just right in front of you. Yeah, so we'll see as we come out of this pandemic era, maybe, if open concept returns yeah. or if people are just like, nah, I don't want to see my family anymore. We've got Audrey on the line and it's time to volunteer a volunteer. We've got some good news for her. Audrey, we've been uh, getting some submissions and stuff for people who volunteer in and around the community. And on behalf of ourselves here at Mix in Hillcrest Montessori Elementary School, we just want to present you with a giant gift. Oh, what is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, apparently you're in an amazing volunteer. Uh, you give so much to the community. As a board member of the Fort Mackay Wellness Center and the Indigenous Support Council of Alberta, you work full time. You're a single mom of four and somehow still finds time to volunteer for all these events um, and your children's extracurricular pr- programs. So much more. They say you go above and beyond. You always put others first. And uh, the person who nominated you, they say, I don't know how she <laughs> does it, but she makes it look easy. And so we're going to go along with the surprise with you right now. We have $100. And Steph, it's either going to be a gas gift card or a grocery gift card, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's open the envelope together. You ready? All right. (laughs) All right. Here we go. Ripping it open. What do we got? We got a $100 grocery gift card. Oh, wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, thank you so much for being a bright light in the community and just offering up your talents and volunteering. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> you are so welcome, Audrey. Hey, there's still one more day left to nominate your favorite volunteer and volunteer them. Huge thanks to Hillcrest Montessori Elementary School for teaming up with us. For this, Mix1037FM.com is where you nominate, and tomorrow we'll give away our last grocery or gas gift card. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.